Like the Nextdoor app, your dermatologist's phone number, or the Freakonomics podcast, 911 is one of the most popular selections on white Americans' phones. But as most of us don't realize, the 911 call has only been around since the late 1960s. Back in the day, when someone wanted to call the police, they had to figure out the relevant jurisdiction they were in, then dial the department directly and hope someone was there to answer. Jesus, so in the horror movies back then, did the victims just accept their fate? Or did they leave voicemails for the police? Like, hey, so I get you guys are busy, but I, I'm pretty sure there's a serial killer in my house. So if you have any time at all in the next couple hours, I'd really appreciate it. It wasn't serial murder, however, that inspired the 911 call system. It was actually the civil rights movement. 1967 was one of that movement's busiest years. According to historians, there were 159 civil rights protests just over the course of that summer. To find out what it was exactly that was making people so gosh darn mad, President Lyndon B. Johnson appointed an 11-person commission to investigate. Much to the surprise of the millions of Americans who were still in denial, the report cited white America's racism as the primary cause of civil unrest in black communities. It demanded investment in housing and social services for black communities, recommended federal action to challenge discrimination in employment and education, and cited numerous instances where police, not protesters, escalated riots. While that made complete logical sense, it was not what the government wanted to hear. After the commission's preliminary findings were released, 120 research staffers were fired for suggesting that maybe so-called riots were both justified and effective. 53% of white Americans at the time refused to accept the idea that the real reason for the riots had anything to do with actual racism. I'm sure they had all sorts of strange explanations. Pomade, it's, it's making young people aggressive. Or Soviet propaganda is making them think that they're oppressed. Or that property destruction is actually pretty fun. It is hard to argue with that last one. The commission did pay lip service to social investment, but its core suggestions focus more on the stuff America knows best. Expanding police capacity, militaristic riot control, tear gas, and the most innocuous sounding of all, a universal emergency services telephone number based on the one implemented by the United States in Caracas, Venezuela in 1963 to aid urban counterinsurgency efforts. Five years later, our chickens phoned home to roost as city after city adopted 911 systems during the civil rights movement's zenith. 911 wasn't just intended to be used by citizens to get in touch with the police. It was also intended for police to get in touch with each other and monitor uprisings in real time. The first ever 911 call was placed in February of 1968 from one politician to another in the town of Haleyville, Alabama. Sitting right next to the congressman receiving the call was one Eugene Bull Connor. Bull Connor was Birmingham, Alabama's public safety commissioner in the 50s and early 60s. He thought the biggest public safety issue at the time was the civil rights movement. They say he also really cared about arson which is maybe why he was constantly ordering his men to do this. Although Americans usually don't think of segregationists like Bull Connor when we dial 911, their legacy is still very much a part of the system. A study last year from the Vera Institute of Justice finds that most of the 240 million annual calls to 911 relate to non-emergency or non-criminal issues, such as complaints about noise, parking issues, and unhoused persons. But the people sent to handle those issues aren't equipped to address homelessness, mental health crises, or even conflict resolution. The only thing they've really proven to be effective at is the thing their profession was originally designed for, to beat and kill black Americans. Lest we forget, the modern American police department originated from slave patrols. But at least they didn't have a special phone number for it back then. For Mind Blowing Old News, I'm Anders Lee with Redacted Tonight.